much for inviting me and uh, I hope to go through here in the next few minutes. Um, uh, here we go. These three topics um, are well known to everyone in the room. You deal with it every day. Um, but as a radiation oncologist who uses IMRT, SBRT, and, and other modalities, um, including brachytherapy where we implant radiation in various parts of the body, uh, this has been an interest and passion of mine for a number of years, uh, and in part because we have a good impact when radiotherapy is used in various parts of the body for metastatic disease, and in part because this is such a large and unmet clinical need. So this will be familiar to most of you, but I, I find this paper uh, in the JCO uh, rather helpful, in particularly when I'm explaining it at tumor boards or with patients, that we know over the years the great work that many of you have done uh, in improving the chemotherapy options and improving overall survival in metastatic colorectal cancer uh, has been augmented or improved with local therapy. In this particular case, the graph shows significant improvement in survival with the addition of liver resection. So the principle of liver control has been well established in colorectal cancers as a way of long-term survival, even in metastatic disease. This uh, very provocative paper from um, JAMA Oncology tried to get to the, uh, to the root uh, contributions of not only chemotherapy but local therapies and supportive care to those patients getting improved overall survival and local control. And on the left-hand side, you see that in first-line experimental arms over the past 20 years, there was a consistent improvement in outcomes. Unfortunately, as we see, second- and third-line experimental arms were a complete failure. And that's where uh, we find ourselves in the liver-directed group uh, in radiation and surgery. So a pretty consistent 0.8 months per year over 20 years rise and improve mean overall survival with better chemotherapy, but the authors point out also a very a strong component of better local regional control and supportive care. So again, second-line therapies fail to improve overall survival in this time period. The authors um, put forward that a progression-free survival should equal overall survival for uh, chemotherapy being the only contributor, and they show uh, in another way overall response rate, the efficiency of chemotherapy being extremely poor in second-line therapy, again, over that time frame. So we clearly need more effective treatments in second and third line and plus fourth line, fifth line. And as we've heard earlier today, there's quite an amazing number of options. But I just want to focus on an outpatient local treatment that has in the past at least and currently still does provide a reliable and safe response rate and liver control for these patients. The reason we can put high doses of radiation into the liver safely is one, the anatomy, and two, the uh, radioactive isotope we use. The isotope yttrium-90 only penetrates about two millimeters into tissue, so if it's implanted in the correct place, the normal associated liver next door will not be injured. And the hepatic artery is the main blood supply to metastases, whereas the portal venous system supplies the normal liver. And that uh, linked to a tumor type, colorectal cancers, that are very sensitive to radiation, is the rationale for why this appears to work well. So the multidisciplinary team, which is very important in all complex GI cases, is important in patient selection. This is a, a therapy that can be very effective and it also can cause severe and sometimes fatal side effects. But it is used over 1,100 hospitals worldwide. Predominantly, uh, the 380 plus US centers uh, treat more than 6,000 of the 9,000 treatments per year. And it is an established treatment for multiple tumor types, not just colorectal cancer. What you see here is a, a patient that has on this 3D reconstruction multifocal and extensive liver metastases. Certainly we could not approach this with conventional radiation or stereotactic. And on the right-hand side, you see something called a dose volume histogram, and that's a dose calculation we've done to show how much of the tumor received what dose of radiation, and then what of the normal liver uh, received radiation. And we want that to be as widespread as possible, so the two curves, uh, ideally no radiation to normal liver. But what you see with brachytherapy is we can give extremely high doses of radiation safely uh, with the normal liver getting very little. This is a more common type of patient treated with seven to nine lesions in the liver. And in the upper right-hand corner, you see this color cloud covering the 
the actual lesions. And at six months, which is the lower panel right, um, a resist partial response. So I'm gonna not talk about first line use of Y90 uh, because that has <laughs> a very big topic. And as many of you know, that was reported last year as a negative study in over 1,100 patients receiving resin microspheres with Volfox and Bevacizumab. But where we do have uh, high uh, medical evidence for efficacy is in salvage therapy and third line. So in the limited studies that have shown Volfox failures going on to get arena t can and 5-FU, consistent results in prospective studies showing a very strong response rate, close to 50%, stable disease in another 30 to 50%, and overall survivals uh, rivaling most studies in the last 20 years. So we get to where we mostly use Y90, and the most common referral is a metastatic colorectal cancer patient who has gone through three lines or more of chemotherapy, and for either toxicity issues or uh, other issues is looking for treatment for liver-dominant disease. And so the study that I'm gonna highlight is one's a prospective and one's a retrospective, and this is the Hendelese study, which although small, um, was very powerful in, in clinics in that 5-FU was given continuous infusion along with uh, Y90 in the experimental arm, and there was um, pretty even matching, and unfortunately, the toxicity that we saw in, was mostly in the chemotherapy alone arm, but interestingly, the time to liver progression was significantly higher in the Y90 treated patients, and time to progression anywhere in the body was um, better with the uh, double treated or experimental arm. Because there was crossover between the two arms, the overall survival is uh, not significant. For retrospective uh, studies, a very large study in the US uh, invited 11 of the top 15 institutions. For every single patient they treated with this diagnosis, an independent CRA firm extracted the source data and it was almost equal academic and community setting. And this was real world treatment, not a prospective study. But the main points of this were to look at uh, toxicity in the community and also the risk of uh, the feared um, radiation induced liver disease or REILD. And you can see those are very low numbers. So this is the uh, long term survival for that uh, retrospective study. And it showed a, a couple of things. One I might highlight is, as you would imagine, patients that had less chemotherapy prior to treatment had better responses, and those were statistically significant. Another offshoot of this was that um, hemoglobin level was very important, much like we see with radiotherapy to cervix cancer. And finally, uh, just to highlight that the long-term complications were less than 1%. So in conclusion, liver-directed therapies are still very important, even in patients with, uh, quote, salvage therapy, in that uh, at least from today's afternoon session, I'd say that Y90 therapy is a proven effective treatment option for outpatient and needs to remain in the armamentarium for metastatic colorectal.